It's Tuesday, it's Tuesday. So welcome back to Great Photography and Video on the Budget with George E. Harrison. And I'm going to thank you as always for coming along on this photographic journey with me. Now, if you, as you remember from Friday, was part one of what kind of image quality can you get from a six megapixel point and shoot camera? Or what kind of, let me rephrase that, what kind of image quality I got from a six megapixel point and shoot camera? You might actually get, be able to get better quality because you can be a better photographer than me. But that's why we're on this photographic journey together. And the idea is do not get caught up in megapixels. Because you know, if I can show you this, these size pictures I was getting back then with a six megapixel camera, and you know, technology with processors and sensors that's really changed a lot in the last five to 10 years, imagine what you can get. And I'm gonna I'm start off right now with a picture from actually about, I'm gonna say it's 10 years ago. It's a picture of a church, actually before I go to church, cause you know, I'm gonna show pictures, you might as well get a free plug. St. Luke United Methodist Church in Ashbury. Come on one Sunday, actually come down and join us, see if the picture actually looks really like the church I did a doctorate. And I gotta show you a little bit right here. So I'm zoom in. As you can see, right there, you read that name clearly. And like I said earlier, yes, if you zoom in 300%, you will say that you will probably say, oh, that St. Luke's not as sharp as it should be. That's probably true, but guess what? Your eyes is not zooming in. Or like I said Friday, not unless you have bionic, bionic eyes. This is going to be sitting on the wall. You're either going to like it or you hate it. And actually, let you also know, not only is this a six megapixel shot with a six megapixel uh, point and zoom camera. This is JPEG. Yes, I do shoot raw. I shoot raw and JPEG, but most of the time I end up editing with JPEG. Why? Well, most of the time my exposure is pretty dead on, especially if I'm shooting the building or something static. And the only thing I actually did for this picture in post-processing, right across here was some power lines I took out. I actually added more branches to this Added more branches to this tree right here. And you see why these trees are right here? That actually was some houses, so I just put some more trees there. That's the only thing I did in post-process. The exposure and everything else is pretty much dead on. Why? Because I believe do, do as much as good. To, I want you to yeah, shoot them raw, because I do shoot in raw and JPEG at the same time. But a lot of times I use a J JPEG. Why? I don't want to do a lot of processing in the lab after the fact. Try to get it right the first time and that saves you a lot of trouble just then you don't have to do my tweets. And I'm going to put that down and show you one more picture I took actually a little about 10 years ago. And this is a wedding picture. This was actually shot outside. And this is our, actually, this is our lovely daughter Tammy. And as you can see, you can probably see it's not, if you zoomed in on her, her eyebrows, you'd probably say, well, that's not super, 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 super sharp. And you're probably right, but your eyes are not zooming in on eyebrows. Plus, this is actually shot on canvas paper. This was shot outside, actually on her deck. And again, this is a six megapixel point and shoot camera. And the point I'm trying to make is here, don't get all caught up and thinking you got to have the latest and the greatest gear to make, to make great, great pictures. Of good pictures. You don't. Because sometimes we have a tendency, we get so caught up in the gear, we forget about framing, we forget about, you know, exposure. Then, then after we, we did that, then we'll spend hours and hours in the lab, you know, trying to make it right. But remember what I said, I shoot in RAW? Yes, I do shoot in RAW in JPEG. But a lot of times, in controlled environments like this, let me bring up both these pictures right quick. But in controlled environments like this, I mostly end up using JPEG. Why? I'm not going to be blowing my exposure. I mean, if the first shot's not exactly the way you like it, you look through your viewfinder you, and you adjust. You know, the worst thing as a photographer you could ever say, whether well, you're video or you're doing stills, I can shoot in post. Matter of fact, the, I can fix it in post. If it's an emergency, true. But the last thing you want to do is rely on post. Try to capture it there while you're doing it, then that's... Then you have more work, you have more time to actually print and enjoy your work instead of spending all that time in the lab. Remember, when you, uh, you lab and post-process, yes, that's to save you if you really blew out your exposure. But most of the time, you're not going to blow out your exposure. Okay, I will admit, now if I'm shooting the church like this, and I hear a strange noise behind me, and boom, I turn around, I'm already really exposed for the church, and I turn around and see, let's say for some reason, a plane is just south of the land down on Sunset Avenue here in Ashbury. Boom, 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 I want to get some quick shots of it. And my exposure, I might not have time to readjust, cause most, I shoot on manual, now and I'm a the time. I might not have time to readjust everything because I definitely want the picture. Then that's what you lie 
with your raw video and your post processing, things like that. But normally, when you're shooting a day, when you're shooting buildings and things like that, the building's not moving. So you have time to, to frame it and get your exposure right. Matter of fact, to, to be honest, if, you, if you're photographing a building and the building's moving, you got a lot more problems to worry about than, you know, maybe just getting a shot of this building. And I got one more thing. Remember, remember Friday I told you, you know, if you're watching me on Facebook, you know, go to YouTube and subscribe. If you, if you watch me on YouTube, hit the little icon, right, the little subscribe button right there in the, in the right-hand corner. And I tell you, it wasn't like, it, it does say subscribe on it, but it's a picture of the world-famous, it is world-famous, you know, downtown mural. And actually, it looks just like this. This is the world-famous downtown mural. And again, this was shot with the S7, the Fuji S7000, which basically was a six megapixel point and shoot camera. And yes, if you look at this picture, I mean, just like I did last one, now you see right here from a distance, let me just get in the focus right there. You can, read, you can read that name and all that perfectly fine. But yes, if you zoom in, if you're a pixel people, Pixel peeper, as we say about certain individuals, you'll say, oh man, that sign on the blank, that bank said not exactly, exactly razor sharp. No, it's not. Or we used to say, remember, fr remember Friday I told you, I use the example as being really sharp as a pimp straight razor. Well, another example I'm gonna use as a friend of mine, Rocky, I went to school with. He said, fine as a hog's on a frog's back. And I know what you're thinking. A frog doesn't have hers. But well, that show you how fine sometimes, sometimes people want shots. And since I'm talking about school, I'm going to get like a little plug in here. I'm an armadillo. And if you're an armadillo, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't forget to register for the 50th anniversary of the photo technology lab that's coming up. So the deadline's approaching fast. So all you armadillos out there, get on out, get out there. If you haven't registered, go ahead and register. Uh, we want to flood Ashbury with old photographers and new photographers, you know, because that, that is one of the greatest schools in the world. I think it's number two in the country now. But when I was going to school, that was number three. So that, I don't know what that means. That means either the school improved or they glad they got rid of me. I was holding back. But either way, it was a great school. So I want you armadillos to get on out there and register. I know I'm getting a little bit off track, but if you know me, if you haven't known me for any of time, I have a tendency to ramble. But again, let me get back to what I originally was talking about. Megapixel. Don't get caught up on the megapixels. You know, just worry, worry about the image in front of you. And come next week, actually, since this is uh, Tuesday, wait a minute, I confused myself. Yeah, this is Tuesday. <laughs> well, come next, come Friday, we're going to talk about depth of field. Oh, uh, well, correction. I, when I was in school, it was just called simple depth of field, uh, out of focus background. Now it has this fancy word broken and all that. When I first heard that word, I said, what are these people talking about? Then, like, oh, that's what they're telling me. It's like everything has to have a new word to explain something old. But if that's what you want to call it, Vulcan, fine. You want to call it depth of field, fine. You want to call it out of focus, background, fine. But that's what you know, I'm going to be talking about that on Friday. So again, I want to thank you to come along, as you come along with me on this photographic journey. And remember, it's George E. Harrison. Also, I'm going to put, if you're on Facebook, I'm going to put the link link below, below also. And the reason I keep telling you is George E. Harrison. If you just go online and type in George Harrison, look for me on YouTube, that Beatle guy keeps popping up. But, so remember, it's George E. Harrison. And as always, always, I want to thank you for coming along with me on this photographic journey. And I'll see you Friday.